Good afternoon. It's wonderful to be with you. It's wonderful to think that all of Mount Carmel is participating in this Mass today, this Mass that commemorates all souls, a very important uh, remembrance that we have as a church community. So if you'll forgive me, I'm going to unhook my mask just so you, that you can hear me better. And let's begin with the entrance antiphon. Just as Jesus died and is risen again, so through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep. And as in Adam all die, so also in Christ with, will all be brought to life. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Friends, on this day, uh, let us remember that we are faithful disciples who are trying to be more faithful disciples. Good people who wish to be better people. And so in that spirit, once again, let us ask for God's mercy. Lord, for the times that w our faith has wavered, we pray, Lord, have mercy. Lord, for the times that we have lacked hope, we pray, Christ have mercy. And Lord, for the times that we were uncharitable, we pray, Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Listen kindly to our prayers, O Lord, and as our faith in your Son raised from the dead is deepened, so may our hope of resurrection for your departed servants also find new strength. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. The souls of the just are in the hands of God, and no torment shall touch them. They seemed in the view of the foolish to be dead, and their passing away was thought and affliction, and their going forth from us utter destruction. But they are in peace, for if before men indeed they be punished, yet is their hope full of immortality. Chast chastised a little, they shall be greatly blessed, because God tried them and found them worthy of himself. As gold in the furnace, he proved them, and as sacrifice sacrificial offerings he took them to himself. In the time of their visitation they shall shine and shall dart about as sparks through stubble that shall judge nations and rule over peoples and the Lord shall be their king forever. Those who trust in him shall understand truth and the faithful shall abide with him in love because grace and mercy are with the holy ones and his care is, is with his elect. The word of the Lord. Please respond, the Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In verdant pastures he gives me repose. Beside restful waters he leads me, he refreshes my soul. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. He guides me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side, with your rod and your staff that give me courage. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For Christ, while we were still helpless, died at the appointed time of the ungodly. Indeed, only with difficulty does one die for a just person, though perhaps 
for a good reason, one might even find courage to die. But God proves his love for us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. How much more then, since we are now justified by his blood, we will be saved through him from the wrath. Indeed, if, while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, how much more, once reconciled, will we be saved by his life? Not only that, but we will also boast of God through our Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, through whom, through whom we have now re received reconciliation. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and when he had sat down, his disciples came to him. He began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the land. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness for they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. And blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they insult you and persecute you and utter every kind of evil against you falsely because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. It's wonderful to be with all of you today. I have to make mention of those magnificent readings that we began with. And the first line of the second reading, hope does not disappoint. If that's not offering us some guidance, particularly on this day, I don't know what will. And from the first reading, the souls of the just are in the hands of God. We have we find magnificent comfort in that, and we celebrate that on just such a day. The gospel today, some of you may be saying to yourselves, I believe I heard that gospel yesterday. It was for the celebration of all saints, and yes, indeed, that was the gospel. There are many gospel options on this day, but I purposely chose this one to show how we really do celebrate the lives of all souls and that we gather in prayer fittingly for them today. Yet another quote that is particularly appropriate for this occasion. The resurrection is the expression of God's faithfulness. It is God's way of revealing to us that nothing that belongs to God will ever go to waste. What belongs to God will never get lost. All Souls Day is a day in which we keep memories in hope. It's unlike yesterday where we celebrate those who have been formally canonized by the church and referred to as saints. <clears throat> but today we remember all of those who have died, all souls indeed, they represent the multitudes of people that we have known and love, but all the way to those people that we've never even met or heard of. In the vast number of cases, these were people who were undistinguished by the world's standards, though some were clearly very special to each of us. They counted in God's eyes, of course, and are imprinted indelibly in God's heart. 
God has not allowed them to perish. Today, we deepen our relationship with them through our memory and our prayer. Our worship today expresses a living union with them and our confidence in their union with God. Many of you have seen the film, The Shawshank Redemption. Of the many memorable quotes of that film, this one is perhaps the favorite of so many. Hope is a good thing, maybe the best of things, and no good thing ever dies. For all that can be said on this day, we can clearly know that this is a day of hope. Many of us have been in situations where we have experienced the death of a loved one, whether family or friends. Undoubtedly, we are bombarded by hope-filled words from those who generously offer their support on those sad occasions. Such hopeful talk regarding the future was a meaningful extension of the community's expression of grace in the present. How appropriate. For in the present, most of us feel that we know of God's compassion and healing and saving love through Jesus Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit. And as such, we hold forth a connection that God's gracious mercy will extend into death. We believe that. We proclaim that. Saints give us hope. Those who are canonized help us think of those saints who are not canonized. How interesting to think, therefore, that we really are companions in hope, both with the living and the dead. We have unity with the dead in believing in the eternal mercy of God. It is the same hope that reflects our apparent fundamental knowledge that questions about life and death are ultimately questions about God. The subject of death quickly brings us to the limits of our thinking and imagination. The language that we apply on occasions of death uh, and the death of someone we've known is in many ways an expression of the ultimate power of God in whose presence one writer once wrote, even death is a creature. The formal title for this day, we call it All Souls, but the formal title is The Commemoration of the Faithful Departed. And that is, of course, appropriate. And yet, In a real sense, we are blessed if we mourn or grieve for someone because that means we have loved and been loved. As such, this celebration of the faithful departed helps us realize that not everything of what they were has departed. The faithful have also imparted, as one Jesuit scholar once said, They have given us a sense of soul, of faith, of the beyond, and a deep sense of what is important. Over the years that I've ministered at Mount Carmel and other high schools on a college campus, I've been privileged to hear of the reflections of students who have lost grandparents very often and on occasion, even parents. And they have shared with me the singular impact that that individual had on their lives and how their life, their hope in them, brought them to a certain point in their lives. And it's always profound to hear that. I can never tire of that. As such, we remember and we thank our God for those so-called faithful imparters. The Eucharist that we celebrate today 
is a recollection that at death, life has changed and not ended. As we pray for our departed loved ones today, we can remember that we are all in need of God's forgiveness, and we express our hope that we too will live with our departed under God's unending care. <clears throat> in that same spirit, and similar to the words with which I began, uh, I would like to share a final quote from a passage from a theologian named Elizabeth Johnson in her book, Friends of God and Prophets. She wrote, hope is a dynamic at work in a community. Finding expression in a community's imagery, rituals, and stories, hope arises in individuals insofar as they're involved in these social realities. In the Christian community, a shared attitude of trustful hope is directed toward the gracious reality of God, who in making and sustaining the world, raising Jesus from the dead, and gifting human beings with grace, pledges unconquerable fidelity to all of creation. In turn, the church cries out to God amidst the beauty and the sufferings of history, you are my hope, and sets itself to the task of making an earth where life with dignity is possible for all of creation. So we continue our celebration today, and let us be mindful of those dear ones who have lived uh, and been part of our lives as we offer together our prayer of the faithful. Following each petition, please respond, Lord, hear our prayer. For all who lead the church, may the spirit of our loving God grant them the gifts of wisdom, understanding, compassion, and justice. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For the Mount Carmel community, that in the tradition of our Carmelite founders, we too may model our lives by acts of charity and social justice. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. For all who exercise the right to vote and for all who seek public office, may those we elect to represent us work for the common good of all people in our city, state, and country. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For those in our family and community who are ill, and in a special way, we pray for the continued recovery of Sue Doheny. May they find comfort and hope through their faith and be restored to health. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. We pray in thanksgiving for all of our departed family members, loved ones, and friends, especially those who we call to mind at this time. May they be welcomed into eternal life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For the intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. I'd like to offer a special prayer for the dearly departed of our Mount Carmel alumni. We pray for them. We pray in thanksgiving for their legacy, which has allowed us to be at this place. Uh, in so many cases, they were family members, they were friends, but in so many more cases, they were people that we never knew or met. But we thank God for them, and we pray uh, for them to a loving and merciful God. For this, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, we thank you for the gift of this day. We thank you for all people who are part of our Mount Carmel community, our students, our faculty, our administration, our alumni, our friends. We ask you to continue to bless us and guide us with your spirit as we seek to do your will. We make this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> Amen.
mystery of this water and wine. May we come to share in the divinity of Jesus, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth is given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Friends, pray that our sacrifice, yours and mine, may be acceptable to our Almighty God. Look favorably on our offerings, O Lord, so that your departed servants may be taken up into glory with your Son, in whose great mystery of love we are all united, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when the earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Blaise, our Bishop, the clergy, and all the people of God. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection 
and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. And once again, let us pray with humility and with faith. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, You take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. <clears throat> Behold the Lamb of God. Behold the one who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. I believe that on your screen you're able to see the prayer for spiritual communion. It is a prayer that is made when offering the Eucharist to the faithful is not possible. So let us pray together if your teachers allow. Let us pray the prayer of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least to me spiritually into my heart as though you were already there. I embrace you, and I unite myself to you. Permit not that I should ever be separated from you our communion antiphon. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. Whoever believes in me, even though he dies, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will not die forever. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that your departed servants for whom you have celebrated this paschal sacrament may pass over to a dwelling place of light and peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord is with you. May Almighty God bless us all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Let us go in the peace and joy of Jesus Christ. And allow me, please, to offer uh, special thanks to
to those who made this Mass possible for us, to Mr. John Stimler, to Mr. Tony DiFilippo, to Ms. Ellie Menke, who is our camera operator, and uh, all of them really coordinated this Mass and made it possible. To our readers today who did such a fine job, uh, I thank all of you, and to all of Mount Carmel, God bless.